This week on Passion for the Hunt, we're near Brainerd, Minnesota, and we are at Point Blank Gun Training. This is going to be a, a day of learning how to and applying the knowledge of long range rifle shooting, uh, something that I've never done before, you know, something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Rifle season is, is coming up this fall fast. I got some rifle tags, so no better time to test out a new rifle, a new scope, learn something new, and get her done with some long range shooting. Coming into this class, I haven't had a whole lot of experience shooting long distances. Typically, we'd shoot our guns at 100 yards before the Wisconsin deer season, and that was the extent of any long range shooting for me. Coming into this class, it was really a fresh slate for me, being able to learn how to shoot beyond 100 yards and you know, even up to 750 yards at the tail end of it. I wouldn't rate my shooting ability long range more than maybe on a scale from one to 10, maybe a three or a four. I've never gone through any formal long range shooting education whatsoever. So I'm pretty anxious for today. Uh, most of my deer hunting rifles are zeroed in at 200 yards, uh, the best of my ability. And, and I probably wouldn't take a shot in the field beyond 300 yards, assuming I could get that close. Here at Point Blank Gun Training, we uh, teach people to uh, shoot better. We teach them obviously basic safety habits. Uh, we also uh, try to teach them uh, external ballistics and other additional uh, features for uh, improving their hunting skills. So every class at Point Blank here for the long range starts off at 25 yards. They need to print on uh, the target there so that we know they're going to be close enough at 100. Then we teach all the fundamentals and all the math lessons at 100 yards. Then we start moving the shooter to 2, 3, 4, 500, and then finally 750 yards. We like to reach out and we're big target guys. We're not, uh, we don't have a lot of time during hunting season but the bottom line is we're always looking for a better group, a better group. So uh, the idea with a long range is kind of born out of, out of our, uh, our skill set. The neat thing is, is I bring the mechanical end to it, Vance brings the computer end of it. We'll have some cool systems and, and uh, we threw a class together a few years ago and, and have an absolute blast doing it. Can you see the target okay? Can you see your reticle okay? If you need to back out your magnification, go ahead. No, I'm good, fire in the hole. So range is ready, range fire is when you're ready. I'm about an inch and a half lower the cross. Okay, left and right, you're within an inch or so. You're right. not outside the black line. I'm on the black line. Perfect. On the center? Perfect, man. You're yeah. Go. Okay, what we're looking for, he's got a bore access, probably about an inch and a half, maybe two inches. This first shot at 25 yards should be about an inch and a half to two inches low if he's sighted in, say, for 100 yards. So this looks good, we can adjust from there. We make sure the left and right is good. He's perfect, he's on the line. Uh, left and right's awesome. He's just a little bit high at that point. So, very good, okay, next shooter. We see a lot of guys at the 25 yard here. The first thing they do is they shoot, they pop the head up, and they're trying to look for the hit on target. I don't know about you guys, but I can't see the hits at 25 yards. Yeah, <laughs> I can't follow that bullet either. Right, yeah. <laughs> Range is ready, fire when you're ready. Left and right is awesome. He should be dead on center. And we're basically the exact bore axis down, so I'd expect him to be the 100 yard zero. And uh, the other rifle that we have out, that 6.5 uh, Creedmoor with the Stierka on it, is about a 200 yard zero. Sometimes the 200 yard zeros we see actually at the plus sign. If it's above it, at 100 yards, you're gonna hit well above the intended target over there. So this is perfect. We'll move on back to the 100. Sounds good. Good job, guys. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna start uh, shooting some uh, groups at the 100 yard. Bottom line is this, we're gonna work on fundamentals first, and then we're gonna work on an, uh, uh, adjusting your scope a little bit, kind of getting the groups tightened right up. So I don't think this, guy, this group will have a problem. At Point Blank here, we teach in the long range class, at 100 yards especially, all the fundamentals. So what we're going for there is teaching people to be a better, more consistent shooter. We're teaching them uh, some of the ballistics behind their, uh, their rifle uh, as we move out to the further distances so that we prove that data. Uh, we also teach them some of the lessons to use with their uh, scopes, uh, other optic accessories, etc., uh, to make them a little more successful uh, in their future endeavors. Range is ready, shooter's ready, fire when you're ready. Same point of aim, upper right quadrant and target one. Nice trigger. Good job, that was a half inch left of bullseye. Vertical is perfect. This is kind of the order they teach the fundamentals in. In other words, breathing, we talked about that. Take a couple of deep breaths, get the heart under control. I take usually three breaths. I watch my reticle move on the target. And as I time it, when I let my breath out, do not hold it, you'll start to shake a little bit. 
you gotta remember it takes about a quarter of a second for the brain to send little little neurons to these things to pull that trigger. The problem is people tend to go, okay, I see the reticle, I gotta pull the trigger right now, and they do that, okay? Try to avoid that. We want a nice steady press to the rear, very smooth. Natural point of aim. What that is, is I get the gun on my shoulder. I've got no muscle input. In other words, it's resting on my shoulder. I've closed my eyes for maybe two seconds. I open my eyes. Is the reticle still in relatively the same spot as when I started this exercise? If you're putting muscle input to the gun one way or the other, the reticle is not gonna be aligned naturally when you open your eyes back up again. And again, we've harped on trigger control, fall through. Do not throw the finger. Press the trigger with the center of the pad, press it to the rear, hold it till the shot breaks. The reason we promote that in the hunting scenario, especially if I need to run another round, you shoot that animal, it's not always super apparent how good that hit was. It's not fair to the animal if you wounded it or, or didn't get a good ethical kill shot, you might need to send another, another round quickly. Stay behind the gun, admire your work through your sights is what I tell people, so you're ready for that second round. Any questions? Nope. Okay. Sounds good. Let's go back and do a natural point of aim exercise. And then I want you to close your eyes, open your eyes, close your eyes for about two seconds, open them up, see if the reticle is still in the same spot. How much movement do you have? How far are you off? Probably two inches still. Okay. So we need to change the position a little bit. Yep. This is what I'm seeing. So is your bag stable? What's moving? Are you up and down, left and right? Left and right. Okay. I'm moving, I'm moving to the right. Okay. I, I, I come back to the bull, but it moves to the right like an inch and a half, two inches. Okay, so is your head resting completely on that stock? Completely relaxed? Yeah, get the butt up a little bit. Yep, squeeze with that right hand in your case. You should be able to squeeze that bag. So now, if, if you've got a, a good squeeze of the right hand, oh yeah, you should be able to rest your head on there. Nothing should be moving. Your feet look good. Your spine's fairly straight. Your butt's flat on the bench. That makes a difference right there. Okay. Squeezing that bag and resting my head. Okay, perfect. Brian and Vance, they really break it down into, you know, just such good concepts. You know, you can go online, you can Google MOA and learn a whole bunch, uh, you know, just general knowledge about MOA and know exactly what it is. But it's, it's the concepts and, and just how it's applied that really makes the difference and, and really helps a guy learn how he can apply it in a hunting situation and what it really means when you're applying it to that rifle and when it comes right down to that one shot for one kill at a long distance, all this stuff just really comes together in the fine details. Top page, your hand out there, the very top section, it talks about what MOA is. MOA stands for minute of angle. It literally means a 60th of a unit is minute and the angle is 360 degrees in the full circle. So it's 60 times 360 is how we come up with this number because obviously 60 per every degree, we come up with 21,600 MOA in a full circle. So at 100 yards, it's exactly 1.047 inches is one MOA, all right? So I'm gonna have you move down about two inches. How many MOA are you gonna dial? We're at 100 yards approximately right now. Four. This is this will be really fun the whole day. So the just two. 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 two MOA. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Trick question. Oh, yeah. I was thinking yeah. clicks, yeah. my yep. bad. No, no, exactly, no, no. yep. My fault. Exactly, and that's why we're talking, generally speaking, I wanna talk in full MOA, and then you yeah. need to convert to clicks. If it's easier for you to think in clicks, I got no problem with that. You just need to tell me that you're talking clicks or full MOA, does that make sense? Perfect. Just so yep. we're not, because if you dialed four right now, you'd be double off, yeah. obviously. At 750, that's almost eight inches for a whole MOA. Yeah. Does it make sense? So you'd be for off sure. 16 inches roughly. One of the things we did was shoot this tall target where we could adjust our turret and find out how much distance our gun could actually shoot. You could really learn how your scope and your gun work together, find out a little bit about the ballistics of the bullet that we were shooting. And you know, in the end, you know exactly how far your gun, caliber, and scope combination should be able to shoot. So what we're gonna do here is what's called a tall target test. You guys are gonna aim at the same point of aim each time, A, B, targets. You're gonna, after every shot, dial up 10 MOA and take another shot until you either run out of adjustment or run out of paper downrange. So we're gonna be spinning the turret 10 MOA each time. Up each way, yep. Count every click because it's gonna get to the top at some point and then we're gonna have to bring it back down and remember what the number was. You'll right. recount back it. Back to zero. And you're gonna prove that zero. You always come Perfect. back and prove all your hits. Now Vance is gonna talk about what this should look like on the target. We'll actually measure it as we move on our way to move to the 200 yard mark. Your hit should look like this. We're gonna have one at your center of aim. You should have one 10 and a half inches up, another one 10 and a half inches up, et cetera, et cetera, until you run out of movement or run out of paper. So the tall target test, what we're looking for obviously is the rounds to track even with each one of the shot strings and be about 10 and a half inches apart, uh, 10.47 inches. Uh, this was your first shot, this was your last shot. 
So you moved a little bit, not bad. Yeah. You have all total here, 43 MOA of adjustment. You could probably shoot 1100 yards with that, maybe a little further. We see a lot of folks that are, they buy a rifle package, you know, at a big box retail store. They've drawn an oak tag. This is a one in a lifetime chance. So what they need to do is learn how to shoot the firearm and uh, adjust scopes, things like that, understand internal and external ballistics. The idea of our class, is we take the, the first time hunter, the first time long range shooter, and we'll build him up uh, to where he's got a, a good competence level. He understands what every dial on his scope's doing. He understands internal and external ballistics, uh, the fundamentals of pulling the trigger on that rifle, uh, all add up to a successful hunt for that student. The reason you want to take a class like this, it doesn't matter what firearm you have, you need to be the best part of your shooting solution. It doesn't matter if you have an expensive rifle, we've seen up to $20,000 rifles in class, they get outshot by a $1,200 package or less sometimes. What that means is that it's all about me, the shooter, it's not necessarily about the gun I select. Obviously you need to select a good hunting caliber that'll make a clean ethical kill shot at the distances you'll be using, but you do not have to spend a ton of money to make that happen. What really helps is good data practice with that firearm, get something you can actually shoot instead of something that'll blow your shoulder off when you press each trigger. Well, we jump back to 300 yards, what do we got going now? We're gonna do a little bit of prone shooting here to prove some data out for the, uh, the dope charts that we're making, and then we're going to uh, walk through some of the positional issues that you're gonna run into, and then we're gonna move on to 400. Well, this is fun. We're gradually getting longer and learning some new things along the way. I think I can beat you out this time, Taylor. Yeah. Good luck. Get after it. <laughs> The first key to prone shooting is to be in line as much as reasonably possible to the rifle, to your point of aim. If you're at an angle to it significantly, your shoulder's gonna take the abuse and so will the shot accuracy. So if you take the, the toes, watch up his spine, clear up on the back of his shirt, a little bit of movement here. Of course, you got a, probably a 40 pound leg vibrating the entire spine. So you wanna keep your feet as flat as you possibly can. Good hit, bullseye, bottom right corner. Nice. Nice. Good hit, top left bullseye. Very nice trigger. Shooting at 400 yards, we still have the live cameras. Just a neat system. You can see exactly where we hit. They give us feedback. Uh, first shot's gonna be from the hood of the truck. We'll see how Taylor does. As we're going through, uh, I'm just really, really trying to focus on learning all these things and doing what Vance and Brian tell me to do. And with the intention that if I can learn these things, am I gonna be able to extend my effective shooting range? Because <laughs> at 300 yards, if, if I can get out to 400 yards and just have that absolute confidence that that shot's going where it needs to be, I can already think of how many scenarios I've been in where you know, I really would have had a much better shot opportunity, a cleaner shot at a unsuspecting animal, broadside, standing still at 400 yards. But to get to 300 yards, variables started happening, things started happening, and that shot opportunity dwindled to a split second, and the animal was aware. How do you like that gun and the scope? And Dude, I am absolutely having a blast right now. Um, I can honestly tell you I've never I've never even shot at a 400 yard range before. Certainly nothing like this and yeah, it's just uh, it's just a blast. I can't believe how every single bullet is so well taken care of here with you know the footage and everything from the first bullet we shot till every single one we're shooting right now. Every single one of them means so much and it's all paying off. I mean, this is really cool. Big time. I would have never thought myself and obviously you either be sitting here at 400 yards hitting bullseyes. I've never shot at 400 yards. No, yeah. And in true. half a day, here we are plinking them away. Some of the students come in with uh, very little knowledge. Other students come in a little bit overconfident, I'll call it. Now, until they can print a good group at every distance from the 100 all the way to the 750, they have to prove their skills, then we're not really confident in their ability. What separates the men from the boys is when you get out to 750 yards, we're not necessarily gonna take an animal that far. That's not why we're doing that. Why we're doing that is to solidify the fundamentals. If you can pull a trigger uh, well at 750 and hit your target as intended with a good group size, the bottom line is you're gonna do exceptionally well at the two, three, 400 yard uh, typical hunting scenarios. And that's really what we're building is a skill set for these hunters. 
So at Point Blank here, we film every class that we have as much as reasonably possible, and we produce a video just for the class attendees, so the students. Different trigger pulls, different recoil managements, different body positions, different target hits, uh, and some other data I try to include for the video so that it, they don't necessarily have to keep track of all, but they've got another reference point. We shoot up to 750 yards for the main fact that we try to prove confidence in each shooter. It also builds good data out to that distance so they can be more successful at the more common two, three, four, or 500 yard uh, hunting distances. So remember when I said earlier, your shots are gonna be either vertically or horizontally, mm -hmm. right? We almost always have good data or we have a good shooter, but we don't always have both, right? And so this is why left and right, that's about one MOA for your first shots, 1.2, okay. that's real good. Those are about 10 inches apart, nine inches apart. Then we bumped you up. We hit the right. We hit it right on the nose. Uh, we were top center, low left. Mm. Yep. Good job. Yep. Good stuff, huh, Taylor? Oh my goodness. Yeah. This is so wild, but it's, you know, this just makes it all worth it. You know, everything that we thought about coming here for. It's just, uh, I mean, here it is, man. The proof is in the pudding. You just got to rely on the knowledge, everything from today. Right. You know, I've yeah. never been in this situation. You know, even when we got to 400 yards, this was a different situation than I had ever been in, and here we are. And, yeah, this is this is cool. We should be able to hit something at 300 if we can do that well at 750. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, there's such a correlation between hunting and shooting. And I think if we all look back and reflect on our lives, I think every single one of us has a shot that we wish we could get back. And so good shooting is a part of good hunting, not just being successful and actually getting the targeted animal, but just also just out of respect to the animal, just so you make a clean and ethical kill. Opportunities like point blank gun range and other opportunities where they really stress and teach good marksmanship, you know, there's one thing that you can up your game for this upcoming hunting season, it'd be just to know your weapon, whether it's archery, whether it's rifle, and shoot enough where you're confident. And that confident leads to competence. There's no doubt about it that uh, some of the best hunters that you know are also usually some of the best shooters. Now there's a lot of really good apps that you can get right on your phone that'll show you the ballistics of your rifle because every caliber and every grain bullet is going to have different ballistics. And so the first thing to do is see what the ballistics do on the rifle and round that you're shooting. You know, if you're in the whitetail woods where you don't ever expect a shot, say over 200 yards, that keeps things pretty simple. But you know, a lot of calibers, you know, they do have uh, drops and so that's why I like to personally shoot a really flat shooting rifle. So I'm shooting a 6.5 Creedmoor quite a bit where you know, you look out ballistics wise from say zero to 300 yards, you know, I'm looking at about an eight, nine inch drop at the most. A lot of times you don't even have to adjust your turn. And so you look at from me to 300 yards, that's pretty easy, okay? But beyond that, obviously it gets a lot more complicated because then you got to figure in wind and then you also have to figure out bullet drop. But when you look at an app and then look at the particular caliber that you're shooting, it gives you a lot better idea as far as what to expect for drop and for windage when you're out in the field. Now, if you're going to be hunting out west, if you're going to be hunting for mule deer or for elk, and you're going to be hunting with a rifle, the country is just so big, it's just so wide open. Whereas elk hunting, for example, you know, it's not uncommon to have a 300 to 500 yard shot. And the beauty of this is that with ballistics and spending some time on the range, it's really easy to get competent out to 500 yards. If you can hit a target consistently on a range, you're gonna be a lot better situation in a hunting situation because an elk's vitals a lot of times bigger than the target that you're shooting at. When you can get competent and comfortable with those longer ranges and know the ballistics of your rifle, you know, those shots, you know, can be really, really easy to take. Now once you upload that ballistics calculator onto your phone and you have your caliber and you have your grain bullet, you know, then you can make what's called a dope sheet where basically, you, like this particular rifle here, this is a 6.5 Creedmoor, real flat shooting rifle. I'm zeroed in at 200 yards. At 300 yards, I drop eight inches. At 400 yards, I drop 23 inches. So everything is all written out. So my MOAs, drop inches, and scope clicks are all written down here. So that way, when I'm out in the field, I can just look at this as just kind of a cheat sheet. The other thing you can do too is adjust your turn on your scope, where if you're zeroed in at say 200 yards, you can have 300 yards, 400 yards marked on the scope turn, so that way you just you just roll to it. And so just a couple of things, you know, just makes you a lot more prepared once you're out in the field. And so especially if you're hunting out west, you know, definitely take the time to learn your rifle and learn what it can do. 
And one of the best tips that uh, anybody ever shared with me personally, you know, in a hunting situation, fire a dry round. And what that is, is where you basically have everything perfect, you reenact your trigger pulling and just see if your scope moves or if there's any flinch from shooting a rifle. And if you can pull the trigger and nothing moves and everything's perfect, and do it again, everything's perfect. You just make everything smooth and just slows and calms everything down. But that's just a tip that uh, somebody shared with me a few years back, you know, especially for, you know, shots, you know, 300 yards to 600 yards. Practice pulling the trigger with the animal in the scope, no bullet, and then when you feel like you're ready, put that round in. And with the tools that we have today, laser range finders, ballistic charts, really flat shooting calibers, it's really something to take advantage of if you're a hunter.